Ladies and guys who want to drink a little less, Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet and sober individual for one entire year. This is the Kill You and the Loser show. Let's fucking go, baby. So, one fucking year sober, baby. I quit alcohol one year ago and I wanted to do a podcast on what it's been like, what the journey's been like, how I got here, how I did it, how you can do it too if you want to quit alcohol. Or maybe you want to drink a little less. Maybe you want to be a little less reliant on alcohol. Maybe you have no intention of drinking less alcohol, but you're just interested to hear how I did a year sober and and how it's been and what I've learned from it. So I've written a bunch of notes here. So forgive me if I don't look you directly in the eyes because I'm going to be reading off the notes for quite a bit of this. So I quit alcohol about a year ago. And part of the reason, I'll go through like why I started drinking a lot in the first place. So we were in a very bad city in terms of lockdown as in we had insane lockdowns we could only go out for like one hour a day um police were fucking shooting protesters with rubber bullets all this sort of like insane shit couldn't leave the house couldn't go more than five kilometers blah 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 everything was closed we did that for like a long time and that really fucking affected me mentally i'm someone that needs to go outside i need to socialize i need to see other people i need to do my own shit i don't I'm a libertarian at heart. I don't like other people telling me what to do. I don't like to be controlled. I think most people don't like to be told what to do, at least most of you in self-improvement circles. And so what I decided was I said to Imogen, right, we're going to move, like we're moving. We couldn't move immediately. They locked the borders and shit. You literally couldn't leave the fucking city, how insane this shit was. And so we had to like sneak out plus police checkpoints and shit like that. It was fucking insane. And so we planned on sneaking out. And in the lead up to this, I said, right, in order for me to function, like this is fucking insane. My coping mechanism is going to be alcohol. It's either alcohol or I throw myself off this fucking balcony right now. I don't respond well to being locked inside for fucking 23 hours a day. Alcohol it is. And she said, okay, you know, I understand that. As long as you, you know, eventually give it up and you don't drink forever. I said, yeah, of course, like, you know, we talked about it. It was sort of a, it it might sound like a very knee-jerk reactionary uh, thing that I did drinking. Of course it was. But it was also weirdly rational. Like, I I made the decision, I'm going to drink. This is going to get me through. As soon as we're past all this shit and we're out of this state and we're somewhere where we are a little more free, I'll quit drinking. And I stuck to that. I think I drank for an extra like two months after we left. And then I was like, okay, like I promised I would stop drinking. I'm going to stop drinking, you know, and then I did. So I will say, so, so that's how the alcohol started. That's how I started, why I started drinking. I drank before that, of course, like casually. I'd never really had a big problem with alcohol. And again, I think this is a really, I have a really weird, like, people who quit alcohol, they usually do it because they're like, oh my God, I'm an alcoholic and like, this is ruining my life. I'm going to go through this in a second, but alcohol wasn't really ruining my life. Like it was affecting my ability to do certain things. Like I was, I got to a point where I was drinking like all day, every day, just constantly having a buzz. Right. And, and the only exceptions were when I did coaching calls, I would not drink for a couple of hours before a coaching call and I'd, I'd want to be sober. Same thing with podcasts, although I drank a little bit for some of the podcasts, but coaching calls, I was like, I can't be fucking, I want to be fully sober for them. But other than that, it wasn't massively affecting my life. I was a little impaired, obviously. If you're drunk all the time, it's like you're less motivated to do shit. You're less you're always a little tired. Alcohol is a depressant. You're always a little tired, but, and it affected my sleep. And so that kind of didn't help, but it wasn't like my life was falling around, uh, falling apart around me. It wasn't like my relationship with Imogen, my girlfriend was affected. It wasn't like my friendships were affected. It didn't affect my ability to make money. So it was a weird, I have a weird relationship with alcohol where it's like, I can function very well with it. In fact, I think in a lot of ways it helps me some of my best articles ever were written while I was drunk. Like it it allows me to like pour my heart and soul out to fully, it's like it, it, it takes away those inhibitions and I can just write straight from the heart. But I had to acknowledge that it was kind of because it was affecting my sleep more than anything. It's like I was only 70% of where I wanted to be. I was kind of, you know, a little impaired, obviously, especially with the sleep shit. So I got to a point 
once I left, once we left and we're in a better place and shit, I was like, okay, I definitely want to stop this. It's expensive. I don't like needing something in order to cope with life. And yes, I was very glad that I drank in order to get out of that lockdown and get out of that shitty, horrible fucking like, it was, it was really fucking with my mental health. I'm really, as in the lockdowns are affecting my mental health. I'm really glad I used the alcohol to get through that. But then once I was out, it's like I'd made a habit of drinking for like, I think I drank for like, I don't know, six months every day. I think it was six months, maybe longer. I'd have to think about it. Maybe it was like five months every single day. And so it felt like I was then dependent on it. So even when we moved out for the first month or two before I actually quit, everything was better, but it would be like, oh, I'm tired today, so I need to drink. Oh, I'm hungry, so I need to drink. Uh, I have a big coaching call coming up, so I need a drink beforehand, like not on the call, but a couple of hours beforehand to calm myself down and then I can go do the call. Or I just had a big coaching call and now I need a drink afterwards. It's like I was using every excuse to drink. And so again, I never really, alcohol didn't affect me the way it affects some people, but it's almost more insidious when you can function with it. Because you can see a world in which you're like, I could just drink every day or every couple of days and be fine with it. And I see, I've had a couple of coaching clients that are like this, that say, I can drink and everything's okay, but I don't like that I need it. I don't like that I'm dependent on it. I don't like that if I'm sad, I drink. If I'm angry, I drink. If someone cuts me off in traffic, I go home and drink. If I have a hard day at work, I go home and drink. I don't like that. Or if I'm nervous about a day, I have to drink. If I'm nervous for sex, I have to drink. I don't like that dependency. And I think that's almost, like I said, more insidious. And this is where I think most people in society are at. I'm not going to go on a big rant about people in society, but I think most people in society do use alcohol as a coping mechanism. And I think that's fine once in a while. Even then I'd say, I don't think it's fine. We have to define fine. Are we going for fine here? No, we're going for elite. So it's fine, but we can do better than fine. But I think most people do use it as a fucking coping mechanism. And that was basically what I was doing, but drinking every day. So I will also say it made me a little lazy with some of my good habits. Like I noticed some of my good habits starting to slip. I say good habits, like the basic shit that we do, like having a fucking shower. I'd still shower, but I'd only shower like once every two days or brushing your teeth. I'd only brush my teeth like twice a day or once a day instead of like, you know, I like to brush my teeth three times a day. So those little habits were starting to slip. And again, I don't think alcohol was ever going to, I don't think alcohol would ever ruin my life. I don't think I'm like that kind of alcoholic, but it's like I was only operating at 70% of my capacity. And even my girlfriend Imogen said that she said, like, you seem relatively normal. You just seem a little like off. Like you're not quite your a hundred percent capacity. You're like 75%. Like you've had a bad night's sleep, but permanently. And so I said this point before, I don't think in this self, any of you watching, any of us into self-improvement, I don't think we're going for like fine or okay. I think we're going for something elite. So where I was at 70% of my capacity didn't really feel like good enough. So that's sort of the backstory. That's why I drank. I drank to cope with the lockdowns. In hindsight, I'm very fucking glad I did. I, I cannot imagine getting through that shit sober. Now there were, or there would have been other things I could have done if I couldn't drink. I would have had to learn to meditate. I wouldn't have really thrown myself off the balcony. That was just how I felt. I would have learned to meditate. I would have gone inside myself. I would have read self-help books. I would have focused on my content. I would have done other things, but I'm very fucking glad that alcohol pushed me through that. And I've, I've, I've had other people say the same shit to me. I, I worked with this guy a while ago and he came out of this really bad breakup and he drank for like the first month or two and then he stopped. And he was like, I'm really fucking glad I drank for that first month. Yes, I was self-medicating, but it allowed me to open up and actually grieve. When I drank, I could cry. I could fucking miss her. I could do all that shit. And then when I was sober, it's like I couldn't tap into that because it was too painful. So I have seen some people do that. Again, I think we eventually want to get to a point where we're not using any self-medication tools like that, where we can just meditate or we can maybe put on some soft music and just sit there and think about our emotions or think about the shit that's bothering us rather than I have to drink. Or in my case, sit there and meditate and be okay with the fact that the world is in, or sorry, my city is in lockdown and everyone's being crazy and just go like, this too shall pass. I'm not going to let it affect me. That's where I'm at now. But that's a 
hell of a lot easier to say now when I'm two years through this shit and we've had a bunch of lockdowns and masks and we have vaccine passports and all that sort of insane bullshit here, mandatory fucking vaccines and all that crap. Uh, so there's all that going on, but it's easier for me to deal with now because I've practiced for the last two years. I've been dealing with this. I've been working on this. I've spoken to my coaches and my counselors. I've done a bunch of meditating. I've quit alcohol, all of that. At the start, when all this insane shit started happening, I was just like, give me the fucking bottle of whiskey. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to meditate. I just want this. So in hindsight, could I have done it better? Yes. But it's almost not fair to say shit like that in hindsight, because it's like, you're a different person two years later. You are a more evolved person. So I'm glad I drank. I don't want to drink again, at least not for a while. And I'll talk about that in a second. But let's go through how I actually quit. So I just did it cold turkey. I kind of, I knew it was coming because as I said, I, I promised myself if I drink, I should say before I started drinking, I said in my head, if I drink like to get through this lockdown, as soon as the lockdown shit is over, I have to stop. Like I, I told myself, I gave myself permission. I am allowed to drink, but only for this. Like it is for this. I'm making a conscious, rational decision to drink for this. You can argue whether or not it was rational. It felt rational at the time. I'm making a conscious decision to drink through this lockdown. Once it's done, I can't drink anymore. And so it was sort of easy for me. It, well, it wasn't easy, but it was easier than it has been for other people that I've seen quit alcohol because I knew I, I, I had promised myself that and I'm someone that doesn't like to go back on my word. So it's almost like I had to keep myself account. I, I was accountable to myself. That did make it a lot easier. But man, oh man, it was fucking hard to quit during those first two weeks. Like that was fucking nightmare mode. And I say this to anyone who's starting a new habit or quitting an addiction or anything like that. If you can just get yourself through the first two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, here's another good example. Quitting fucking porn. Here's another good example. Adjusting to the keto diet. Any of these sort of like big changes in the first couple of weeks, it's fucking nightmare mode. Every single hour. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do this self-fulfilling prophecy because some of you will It'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy if I phrase it like this, but it might be difficult for you for the first two weeks. And what I tell people is just get through those two weeks. If you can just get through those two weeks, do whatever it fucking takes to get through those two weeks, as long as it's healthy, don't fucking shoot heroin to get you through alcoholism. But whatever you have to do to get through those two weeks, it gets a little easier. And now I'm not going to say all urges go away and it's just fucking smooth sailing. No. But the first two weeks are usually the most difficult and then it gets a little easier because your brain almost fights you in those first two weeks and goes, no fucker, you don't get to quit alcohol. I need it. Give it to me. It's almost like your brain doesn't believe you or your body or whatever it is doesn't believe that you're actually serious about quitting. And if you go two weeks, your brain or your body or whatever it is says, oh, okay, he's actually serious. All right, I'll stop making these urges. I, I understand you're not going to give me alcohol. I'll tone it down a little bit. I'll stop being so crazy with my demands for alcohol. Let's go find some other way to cope with life or some other more healthy way to, to enjoy life. And so those first two weeks were really hard for me. And when you quit alcohol or even just when you decide to drink a little less, like maybe your fucking mission for this year is to drink just a little bit less, like not be so dependent on alcohol. When you do that, you realize how fucking pervasive alcohol is. Like it's, it's fucking everywhere, guys. It really is fucking everywhere. It's on billboards. It's on ads on TV. All of your friends will drink. Random people will drink. Everyone's drinking all the fucking time. And so, my God, those first two weeks were annoying as shit. It's like everywhere I turn, there's a fucking billboard. Whiskey, fucking vodka, beer, 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 beer. Fucking everywhere. And everyone around me drinking and every ad on TV, it just seemed like it was like screaming at me, drink, 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 drink. And so it got easier after about, for me, it was like maybe three weeks. After a month, it was definitely way easier. After six months, it's even easier. And now after a year, you sort of have this thought where you're like, or I had this thought, I should say, where I'm like, I'm just going to go another year. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I ever want to drink. I don't know when I'm going to drink. I think I'll just go another year. So it does get easier. I'm going to go over some strategies on if you guys want to quit or cut down your alcoholism, alcoholism, your drinking. I'll go through some strategies in a bit, but 
really just pushing through that first couple of weeks or that first month maybe is is the best answer I can give you. Distraction. And when I say distraction, I don't mean that in like an unhealthy way. Let's phrase it as like keeping busy. So having a mission that you're working on, going to the gym, you know, all that kind of shit. Do that shit. That gets you through. I'll also say even when you get further along, like let's say you, you get to six months, you haven't really had a drink or you've you've drunk like a couple of times or whatever, but you've been relatively alcohol free, you will still have some urges or some triggers as I call them. Like maybe you're sad one day and you go, oh, well, I need a drink. And you have that little thought in your head that goes, I should drink. I want to drink. I feel sad. You're having a bad day. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you're angry about something and your brain will go, oh, you should drink. A beer will make it better. Have, have a have a whiskey. It'll make you feel good. And that's just because it's a habit. It's the tool that you've used to make yourself feel better in the past. It's kind of your coping mechanism. And so you will need to find replacements. I had to find replacements for my drinking. So, you know, I would play a video game. I would go for a walk. I'd hang out with mates. I would reach out to my accountability partner, which was Imogen for the first couple of weeks. And I had other friends that I told. I'll talk about that in a second. Try and tell as many people as you possibly can. I would go to the gym, I'd eat some food, I'd try not to binge eat, but, you know, food helped. So, you will need replacement healthy behaviors for whatever addiction you're trying to quit. And all of this, maybe I should have said this at the start, all of this applies for basically any addiction or vice or habit that you're trying to break. All of this is the same. So, don't think this applies to just alcohol. It applies to anything you're trying to give up or do less of. So, with those healthy uh, replacements for drinking... Like going for a walk, going to the gym, hanging out with your friends, any of that shit, going to the beach. You want to come up with those in advance. So you need to know what you're going to do if you have a trigger or an urge to drink or, or whatever your addiction is. And you want to prepare for that in advance. So sit down and, and run a mental list or write them down on a piece of paper or something. Things that you're going to do if you feel like drinking. And come up with a list of like 30 things. Because sometimes if you're having a bad day, if you're really angry about something, you might not feel like doing half the stuff on that list. Like you might not feel like going and hanging out with your mate because you're really pissed off and angry and you don't like hanging out with people when you're angry. Maybe you don't want to go for a walk if you're sad because you don't feel like dragging yourself out of the house. That's fine. That's why you have a list of like, you know, 20 or 30 things that you can do. And you run through that list when you feel like drinking and you go, which one of these am I going to do instead? Even if it's just, I'm going to play fucking video games for two hours and that will make me feel better. And then the urge will pass. And it does if you're dealing with the emotions. And another thing I can say on that is deal with the emotions. Like, yes, sometimes in the moment, all you want to do is just grab something else and, and use that to make yourself feel better, like video games, whatever else it is. And that's fine in the moment. But you do then once you feel a little better, or if you're brave enough to do it in the moment, you want to face those emotions and go, why am I having a bad day today? Why am I so angry? Well, I'm angry because that guy cut me off in traffic. Yeah, but why do I care that someone cut me off in traffic? And you'll think through it and you'll go, well, because it means they're disrespecting me. Okay, why do I care about someone disrespecting me? And you'll think through a little bit and then you'll be like, well, because when I was young, I felt like everyone in school fucking disrespected me. I had, no, I had very few friends. Nobody respected me. The teachers didn't respect me. Or maybe when I was at this job, at, maybe at my job right now, no one respects me and I really fucking get triggered by being disrespected because I fucking hate it and I wish I was brave enough to speak up and say, you don't fucking respect me. You know, I wish I had the balls to do that, but I don't. So then when I'm in traffic and someone cuts me off, I honk my horn because that's at least something I can do. But then I go home all fucking angry and pissed off. Like now you're uncovering why you feel that emotion. It's not enough to just say like, oh, I feel sad. Let me make it better with some video games or something. You need to know why you feel sad, why you feel angry. Because when you uncover that shit, you can then go, what am I going to do about it? Okay, I don't feel like my boss respects me. What am I going to do about that? Maybe I'll sit down with him and have a conversation and say, boss, I feel like you don't respect me. Maybe I will work 10 times harder at my job so that I earn respect. Maybe I'll talk to the other people at my job, like my coworkers and say, do you guys think the boss doesn't respect me? Does the boss respect you? If he does, what are you guys doing to, like, to make him respect you? Maybe I can do the same thing. If he doesn't respect you, oh, maybe the boss just doesn't respect anyone. It's not me. It's got nothing to do with me. Maybe I can let go of it and stop holding on to that and go, well, the boss doesn't respect anyone. So it's not just me. So I don't need to be pissed off about that. Maybe I can quit and get a better job. Maybe I can just 
work on my resume and go and apply for some other jobs or just start researching so I know I have other options. So if my boss ever does, just it, it gets too much for me, I can leave. The point here is when you have these triggers to self-medicate, like to drink, to look at porn, whatever your addiction is, look at the underlying reasons why. Like, why am I pissed off? Why am I having this trigger? What can I do about it? A lot of the time when you have these triggers or you have these urges or these frustrations or these emotions, they're trying to fucking tell you something. I did a video a while ago called Your Emotions Are Trying to Tell You Something. When they come up, don't just push them down. Listen to them. They're, trying, they're like a giant fucking red flashing light, a big warning sign saying you're not happy with your life or something could be better. You could improve this. And if you just suppress that and self-medicate that, do so at your own fucking peril because you're missing out on a chance to self-improve. So all of that said, yes, distractions, healthy distractions in the moment can help you get through those real... It, it's hard to do that whole process of why am I sad when you're sitting there going, I want to drink, I want to drink, I want to drink, give me a fucking drink. Like it can be hard to relax and go like, why am I sad today? But try it if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Do a healthy distraction, keep busy, and then come back and examine, why was I so pissed off? Why did I need to drink today? Why was I so desperate to drink? And sometimes maybe the answer is just, well, because it's a habit. Okay, I just need to break that habit. I just Every day I don't drink takes me one step towards like it being way easier, towards sobriety. So, yeah. So in terms of... Uh, did I relapse? That's a question I get asked. No, I didn't. So I didn't drink at all during the entire year. Now, I will say, for full disclosure, a couple of times when my girlfriend would have a cocktail or something like that at a bar and it was like a really interesting cocktail, I would get the straw and I would sip the tiniest, tiniest bit, like a 50th of a mouthful, literally just enough to taste it. And then I'd go, okay, that tastes good. And that was it. So call that what you want to me that doesn't count as drinking because it's like tasting the fucking liquid but so yes so i didn't drink at all during the entire year if however you decide to quit alcohol or reduce it and you find yourself relapsing or maybe you're quitting porn you find yourself relapsing i'm quitting porn right now i will do a video about that in the next couple of weeks maybe in the next two or three weeks um because i've relapsed with my porn i haven't relapsed on a couple of other things that i've quit on top of alcohol i've also quit uh video games and caffeine and I haven't relapsed on them. So some things you might relapse on. The mission here is to improve. It's not necessarily to be perfect. Like I've never said, and I will never tell you to be perfect. In fact, I tell you the opposite. I say, give yourself permission to suck. We're not aiming to be perfect. We're aiming to improve. Slight Edge. If you don't know what the Slight Edge is, it's basically a really awesome book about just being a little better every day, taking some baby steps every single day. The mission here isn't necessarily to be perfect. Maybe one day you get to a point where you're perfect and you don't drink or you don't look at porn or whatever it is, but, and that's fucking awesome. You know, I'm very grateful that I didn't drink this year. I feel like, for me, it was it was difficult at times, of course, and I don't want to minimize how fucking hard it was for me in those first few weeks, especially those first couple of months. It was fucking hard. But since then, it's been pretty smooth sailing. And so I'm grateful that it's been relatively easy for me, that I haven't, I've wanted to relapse, but I haven't relapsed. So I'm grateful for that. But if you do find yourself relapsing, that's fucking fine. I don't want to give you a pass and say relapse as much as you want, but please don't sit there and beat yourself up because that makes it worse. If you sit there and feel guilty and hate yourself and beat yourself up, guess what? That makes you want to drink because you're feeling negative emotions. You're beating yourself up. And then a lot of the time your answer is like, well, fuck it. I should just drink to make myself feel better for beating myself up for drinking, which is fucking insane when you think about it. But that's the way the addiction works or your ego works. It makes you want to drink. And so it will invent reasons for you to drink, like beating yourself up and then going, oh, I feel sad because I beat myself up. I should drink. So it's okay if you relapse. Try not to, obviously, but please don't beat yourself up. As long as you're improving, and when I say improving, as long as you're fucking working on this, genuinely trying to improve this, genuinely taking baby steps, awesome, awesome. One day you might get to a point where you don't drink at all, you don't watch porn at all. I know a lot of you want to quit porn. I do too. One day maybe we'll be at a point where we never watch porn again. Wouldn't that be fucking wonderful? I would love that. If you could give me a pill right now and I take this pill and I never look at porn again, I would take. I would pay a million dollars for that fucking pill. I really would. I really would. But the mission is to improve. Okay, so as long as you're improving, fucking awesome. 
In terms of will I drink again? Maybe. I think probably. Honestly, if I'm honest, I think probably. But here's what I, how I frame it in my head. I ask myself this question. If I drink again, like if I was to drink right now, would I, would it then become drinking every single day? Like, could I have a drink right now once, like one drink, and then not get to a point like three months from now where I'm drinking every day? I ask myself that question. And I asked it recently. I've asked myself that a few times. Like when I, when I came to a year sober, I was like, if I have a drink right now, like, could I have one drink? Or do I honestly think I would just get to a point where I'm drinking every single day? And I thought about it. My gut reaction was like, yeah, if I'm honest, I'd probably drink every single day. Eventually, it might take six months to get to that point, maybe three months. I could see myself using more and more excuses to drink. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm this. Oh, it's my friend's birthday. It's my girlfriend's birthday. It's New Year's Eve. It's this. I could see myself drinking more and more. I had a big coaching call today. It was a very intense one. We went balls deep on this guy's, you know emotional fucking backstory or whatever it took a lot out of me to be his coach for this session i need to drink like i would honestly use those excuses and so i said okay well then i just won't drink so maybe one day i get to a point where i can honestly say to myself i think i could drink now and not make excuses to drink even more and more and more maybe i get to that point for now i'm not at that point so i'm quite happy to just not drink now maybe a year so my mission i should say is to go through another year like one more year, so I get to two years sober. At that point, I'll see how I feel. Maybe I feel like having a drink for New Year's Eve in, in a year from now, and I do. Maybe I don't. We'll see how we feel. So I think that's probably the way I'm going to do it. It's like, how do I feel? Again, like I said, it's it's like weirdly insidious to me because I never had a massive problem with alcohol, and I could still function. And I can I can clearly, like the evidence is right here. I can clearly quit. I just quit for a fucking year. And so that's almost like worse because it's like, it's always sort of calling me back of like, oh, I could drink and everything would be fine. And it would. I could drink and then I'd just quit a year later or, or I'd quit for another year, I mean. So I'm kind of playing it by ear. We'll see how we go. I will say New Year's Eve was very nice sober. I liked being sober on New Year's Eve. My girlfriend was also sober. We had New Year's Eve tonight We uh, together. Sorry. We watched the fireworks. It was really nice. It was kind of nice seeing everyone else like completely fucking drunk and silly. And I'm glad they're having fun. Like it's nice seeing everyone have fun. But it was kind of nice doing that sober. And like you can see how much people drink to run away from their problems or to just be drunk because everyone else is or because they're not comfortable being sober and being the only person sober. You, you do definitely stick out a little bit if you're the only one sober. But I liked that. I liked it. I like being sober. It, it's nice. I, I've said this before. I also like sober dates, like going on a date with a girl Maybe she has one cocktail. Maybe Imogen has a cocktail and I'm sober. I kind of like that because the girls obviously don't drink as much now. Like there's no, and I've, I'm not someone that's ever really had many drinks on dates. I've always preferred sober dates. Like I just never really like drinking that much, but I like sober dates. Like now that they're all sober, I really like that. So we'll get to the final part of this uh, little video, which is how you can do the shit too. So you know, I've given a bunch of tips of, of what I did, what you can do, but I will say the best tip that I can give you is play on easy mode. Like don't play on hard mode. Don't have a big ego here. Don't go, oh, but I want to be a big man and be able to like, you know, control myself. And I want to be able to say I did it myself. So I'm not going to use accountability partners and I'm going to go cold turkey and I don't need the approach. I, I don't need Alcoholics Anonymous and I I can have alcohol in my house and I just won't drink it. I understand the temptation to have a big ego and say, I'm going to do all this myself and I'm the lone wolf and, you know, not ask for help and all that shit, but play on easy mode. Like, and the same goes for porn. I see this with guys a lot where they go, I'm going to quit porn. And I'll say, what porn blocker are you using? Like you're using an app or a program like Net Nanny or Q Studio. There's a bunch of different ones like that or Custodio. I don't know how you fucking pronounce it. And they'll say, no, I'm not using any of that shit. And I'll go, well, why? And they go, well, because I want to be able to do it without a porn blocker. And it's like, okay, then give up your fucking car and don't ever take Uber or public transport or have everyone, anyone drive you anywhere because you want to be able to do it yourself and just use your legs, right? Why are you cheating with a car? It, it's this insane, it's, it's your ego speaking. 
And this is not the time for ego. If you genuinely want to quit an addiction or do less of it or have it have less of a uh, of a uh, less control over you, then play on easy mode. Like take if it's alcohol, take all the alcohol out of your house. If it's porn, use a fucking porn blocker. Use an accountability partner. Use as many accountability partners as you possibly can. Tell as many people as you possibly can. If it is something like uh, drinking alcohol and you have to do this in the first couple of weeks because you just don't trust yourself, give your fucking credit card to your friend or your roommate or whatever and say, bro, don't let me buy anything because I'm tempted to just walk to the fucking liquor store and buy like fucking 50 bottles of whiskey and drink them all right now and just lie to you. So just, can you just take my credit card? And if I need anything, you can just buy it for me. Like just for the first week. Like that's fine. If you need help, like if you want to post on my forums, this is what I did. I posted on my forums, post on my fucking forums and say, I'm quitting porn or I'm quitting this or I'm quitting that. Or I want to do less of this. I'm okay with doing it once a week, but I want to get down to once a week instead of every day. Post on the fucking forums. Tell your friends and family. Tell as many fucking people as you can. As I said before, keep busy during the first week or two. You know, there's that saying, idle hands do the devil's work. So have a lot of shit that you're doing. Go to the gym, work on your mission, go talk to some cute girls, make some money, work overtime if you need to. So that keeps you at the office so you're not at home sitting around going like, oh, I want to drink. Do some meditating. There's a really good book called Letting Go. It's by David Hawkins. I talk about this book quite a lot. That book is pretty good at getting you to let go of some of your emotions, which will be your triggers. Your emotions are going to be your triggers. You know, you're having a sad day, a bad day, you're angry, you're grumpy, you're tired, whatever it is. This book helps you let go of those emotions and like, like deal with them, process them. And that will make it a lot easier to do this shit. Like I said, post on the forums. I posted on my forums. I also sent an email to my email list. I have a list of you know, it's like 900 people or whatever it is that have signed up for my email list. I, I sent an email to all of them and said, hey, I'm not going to drink for a year. I'm going to keep myself accountable. You guys can help me keep accountable. I told all of my friends, I recommend you tell literally as many people as you possibly fucking can. The reason being, if you tell one person or heaven forbid you tell no one, then if you drink or if you look at porn or whatever your addiction is, you're not letting anybody down. But if you tell three people, now, if you have a drink, you're kind of disappointing three people. Like They won't be massively disappointed, but there is that thought of like, fuck, if I do this, then I got to tell them. If you tell 20 people, now there's a thought of like, oh, fuck. Like, if I drink or look at porn, like 20 people are going to be disappointed in me. And if you tell a lot of people, like, I don't even know what my fucking audience size is. I don't know how many people know that I gave up alcohol, right? I posted it. I did a podcast. I did a YouTube video. No, I don't think I was doing YouTube back then. So I did a podcast. I sent it to my email list. I told all my friends and family. I posted on the forum. So what's that? There's going to be like several thousand people there, right? Like that's a lot of people. That's a lot of accountability. And that does make it easier because it's like I've put this out there that I'm going to do this thing. I don't want to be a disappointment to all those people. It's like a, a calling that's greater to yourself. And that's part of, of making this easier is telling other people it, it's not about you. It's about something greater than you. Like me and this community want me to not drink or me and all of my friends and family want me to quit porn. Like you're making it bigger than yourself and that makes it easier to succeed because they will check in with you. They'll say, hey, how's it going? In, in the first couple of months, I had a lot of people email me or post like comments and shit and say like, hey, how's the drinking going? How's that going? I had a bunch of my friends would message me like basically every fucking day. I had some of my friends who were fucking legends in the first couple of months. They were like, hey, bro, how's it going? Did you drink today? And I was like, no, dude, like, it's good. It's good. They were like, cool, dude. Great. Awesome. And I would be that if, if I was ever having a bad day, some of them would say, right, man, you need to deal with these emotions so you don't go and drink. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. You're right, man. You're right. I'm in a, I'm in a really bad mood. You're right, dude. I appreciate you calling me out. I said the words, I appreciate you calling me out. I must have said those words like fucking 50 times to some of my friends. So as many people as you can tell, as many friends especially as you can tell, fucking tell as many people as you can. Play on easy mode. Please don't play on hard mode. In terms of more professional help, maybe you need to, if it's alcohol, join an Alcoholics Anonymous program. There's plenty of places you can find them. I didn't join one, but I have plenty of my friends who have. Uh, let's shout out fucking Tristan Nigro. He's one of my friends. He's got a YouTube channel. He quit alcohol. I think he's like several years fucking sober at this point. He 
joined an AA program. I have other friends who have as well. Maybe you need some counseling or coaching. There are for porn. There are a bunch of websites and shit that you can go to that will counsel you, that will pay you. Um, so you pay them. They're not going to pay you to quit porn. Probably the best one is, and I don't think this is paid, but yourbrainonporn.com. They have a forum. That's probably the best place that I can think of to go to to quit porn. Uh, maybe you need, like I said, an actual counselor to figure out, like, why do you drink in the first place? Why? How do we deal with your emotions and your triggers so we can make this easier for you? How do we free up some of that energy to dedicate towards building a better life rather than, oh my God, I'm stuck feeling sad. I need alcohol or I need porn, blah, blah, blah. So maybe you need professional help. I have counseling. I'll leave a link in the description below to that if you want me to do that. I've helped quite a few of my clients. I can think of one guy in particular. I did a video with him a while ago and he had like a big drug and alcohol problem. He, he had like a big OD and his parents found him and they thought he'd fucking died. And so he went through the trauma of all that. His parents literally thought he'd died from an OD. And so I helped him overcome his drinking and his, for him, it was, it was more uh, drugs than alcohol. But yeah, that's something I can help with if you need that. But I would definitely, if you feel you need it, or even if you think you don't need it, but you know, I think everyone needs professional help in some capacity. And what I mean by that is not that you're fucked up and you have to go talk to a counselor or something like that, but you can always just do like one fucking counseling session. Go find a, a psychologist or a counselor in your area just do one fucking session and go hey i want to quit fucking porn or i want to quit alcohol can you just do a one hour session with me and we can go through some strategies on how i might do that or maybe you go to one fucking alcoholics anonymous meeting and you just see what the people are like you just join one fucking meetup group on i don't know giving up addictions or something and just see what people are like so everyone's going to benefit from that shit i myself have several coaches and counselors i've talked about this a bunch uh for full disclosure, don't hit me up if you just want one coaching session. I don't offer one-off coaching sessions. I have two coaching programs that are 12 weeks long. So don't hit me up for that. But, you know, hit someone up and just do one fucking session or do the 12-week program with me if you want. But I would definitely recommend joining an AA program. Those are all free or something like that. Just just talk to other people. Talk to someone who, who's ahead of you. Talk to a counselor, a coach, someone who can give you some fucking useful information with this shit. In terms of uh, what to do when hanging out with your friends and family, I would again, play on easy mode. So let's say, especially in the first couple of months, let's say you're giving up alcohol, or maybe you're giving up binge eating. I've had quite a few clients that have given up binge eating. My girlfriend Imogen is a bit or was a binge eater. She's working on that. So maybe it's binge eating, maybe it's alcohol. If you're going to hang out with friends and family, play on easy mode and tell them, Hey, listen, tonight, can you please help make sure I don't drink? Or if you have an issue with binge eating, can you please not offer me any fucking food tonight? And if you see me eating food and stuffing my fucking chubby little cheeks with food, can you please stop me? Literally grab the fucking food out of my hand and punch me in the face and say, hey, come on, no food. So telling people, my God, that makes it way easier. Again, the guy that I, I mentioned, the coaching client of mine that I mentioned a, a couple of minutes ago with the uh, drug and alcohol shit, he would do this when he went out with friends and family. He would literally tell them, I'm not drinking. Can you please make sure I don't drink? Can you please literally not let me drink? And people are more than fucking happy to help you. They'll be like, yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck you. I can get on board with that. I'll help you. And that just makes it so much easier. Rather than not telling them, you go on a fucking, you know, you go to a restaurant or a cafe or to a party or whatever. They offer you alcohol. You In the moment, you peer pressure. You don't want to say no, so you take it, you drink. And then afterwards, you tell them, man, I wish I hadn't drunk. And they're like, oh, what do you mean? And you're like, well, I'm trying not to drink. And they're like, well, why didn't you fucking tell me, retard? I offered you alcohol. I would have not offered you fucking alcohol if you told me. I would have helped you. I would have fucking made sure you didn't drink. Now I feel guilty because you fucking took alcohol for... I feel guilty now. So... Please tell people, otherwise you're just making yourself and them feel bad. You feel bad for drinking. They feel guilty because they gave you a drink. They didn't know that you weren't drinking. They can't read your fucking mind. So tell them. In terms of on a date, you can do the same shit. I did an entire video on this, so I won't cover. I won't go over it again on what to do on dates if you want to be sober. I gave a, a run through of a bunch of different strategies, like what you can do. Really, it doesn't fucking matter. Most chicks are fine if you just say, I'm not drinking. They're like, oh, okay. Like, it's fine. If you're in a bar, most bars do like a mocktail that doesn't have alcohol in it. I usually drink that. We can have a Diet Coke. 
where you can just have fucking water. I've drunk water on so many fucking dates. So I'll link to that video. I talk about what to do if she says like, oh, aren't you drinking? You know, how you can make sure she's comfortable with you not drinking like so that she still feels like she can have a drink if she wants to. Uh, I'll leave a link to that. But let's summarize. One year sober, very fucking happy, very grateful for all the fucking people that helped me. Grateful for all of you guys, a bunch of you that emailed me, posted on my forums and helped me. I really fucking appreciate that. You guys made it like infinitely easier. Shout outs to my girlfriend Imogen who made it like 10 million fucking times easier. My mother and my father definitely helped even though they're like, what, like 8,000 miles from here. But they called me a couple of times and were just like, how are you going? Is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I really appreciate that. So I really, really, really appreciate everyone who helped me. You make this shit a million times easier. Like I said, if you play on easy mode and get other people to help you, please don't do this shit alone. Just making it harder, especially something like porn, where you can kind of sneak off by yourself and just kind of do it and no one will know. It's so much easier if you just tell some fucking friends. If you're shy about telling your friends about your porn addiction, post on the fucking forums. Go to my forums and just post on there. Don't do this shit alone. One year sober, baby. Very fucking happy. As always, go out there, guys, and crush your goals, baby. I shouldn't make this face. This is a horrible fucking face. Awful.